do not miss this. Mark 2, 5, Matthew 9, 2, Luke 5, 20. And when he saw the faith, thy sins were forgiven. It's an action. We have a responsibility. Come on, that's right. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. We've got to find that forgiveness. It lies within us. Praise God. You know, as I told you, I, I, I had many travels. I was able to evangelize at different churches, talk to people. I was told about many life experiences and one life experience I'd like to share just a little bit with you. It's from a saint from in, our, from in our church. It's from a different church, but from within our organization. He told me a story about, about his growing up. He said, I was just about 16. He, he lost his mother at a young age, so it was only him and his father. He said, I was just about 16. And my dad asked me what I wanted for my birthday. Now, his dad was very well off. His dad was away from home a lot. He was a national sales rep for a company, but so he wasn't home very often, but they were pretty well off. And this boy says, Dad, I need a car. So they go out, they start looking at car lots. They look and look and they he finally found one. <clears throat> and this this boy says, Dad, this is it. This is the car that I want. The father looks at the car, says, Are you sure? Don't you don't you want a newer, better car that's better in shape? He said, No, this is it. It was a nineteen fifty seven moment, nomad. It was it was in rough shape. But the boys had it set in his mind. This is the car. I need this car. So his 16th birthday rolls around and he could barely wait to get downstairs. His dad was doing his daily devotions. When it was done, he opened the door and he said, Son, come on in here. He said, Son, and he had a box wrapped up. He said, Son, this is this is just a token of my appreciation of how, of what a good man you are and what you are becoming. He said, I know it's been especially hard for you since your mother passed, and here you go. <clears throat> so many things going through the son's mind. He thought, well, I asked my dad for a car, and a car obviously don't fit in a box. But the son was trying to be polite, so he, he opened the box, didn't say nothing, he opened the box, saw it was a beautiful leather-bound Bible. He looked at the Bible, looked at his dad, looked at the Bible, glared at his dad, he said, with all your wealth, this is all that you could afford to buy me? And he put it in a box and shoved it back on the desk towards his dad. He went upstairs, packed the bag like he was getting ready to go to school, came back downstairs, and his dad said, son, don't you even want to read the description? He's, he looked back at his dad with a lot of anger in his eyes. And he said, maybe when I have time. And he walked out that door, unknowingly to see his dad for the last time in his life. The boy graduates, gets a good job, gets married. He's about to have a son. He gets that family reminiscing spirit going. 
he thinks to himself, I should connect with my dad so I can, so my son knows who his grandfather is. He calls his dad and they're both so excited to talk to each other. But they're so busy. They can't wait to see each other, but they're so busy with work. They have to set their appointments back a couple weeks. A couple weeks. The boy, the day before the meeting, the boy is so nervous he can hardly sleep. His stomach's upset. His wife says, why don't you go downstairs and get something to settle your stomach so you can sleep. The husband finally goes to sleep. Susie does the phone rings. His wife grabs her right away before he wakes up. She says, yes, it's the wheel of residence. Can I help you? The other lady on the end of the phone says, is this the residence of Dan Wheeler? She says, yes. This is his wife. Can I take a message? He's sleeping. She says, ma'am, I'm sorry to inform you, but your father-in-law had a massive heart attack and he passed away. So the son had the pleasure of cleaning out the estate. And he came upon, he started cleaning the house and he got to the den. He started cleaning the house and he found that old 16th birthday present. Still on the shelf, still wrapped up. He took it down, he looked at it, he opened the box. He picked up that Bible and a pair of keys fell out. The son could hardly hold back the tears. He knew what it was automatically. He picked up those keys, he ran to that garage, he looked in back of them, all the mother cars, and he saw a car with a car cover on it. He went back there, ripped it off, and he, he saw it was that 1957 no man. He put the keys in the ignition, turned it over, and it occurred, it took him back to that day with him and his dad at the car lot. And he didn't notice it before, but the keys was hanging a little bookmark. And that bookmark said Psalms 30, 130 and 4. But there is forgiveness with thee. It's like the dad was telling the son, it's too late for you and me to stand face to face and say those words. But, but my father, my everlasting father, your father, he's here to forgive you. There, he, he is not going to leave you. He's always here for you. And then that, that story just ch touched my heart. Because it's that story of unforgiveness that none of us want to see in our lives. And we can't go a minute, we can't go a minute without sharing the word without sharing how we feel about each other. We cannot go with holding on to that unforgiveness. And I know many people are going to say, well, that scripture that we read this morning, that forgiveness story was from the Old Testament. But it's told without throughout the New Testament too. Acts 7. We see an old preacher being drug out of town to be stoned to death. And this old man standing back behind the guards before they started beating the preacher. The guards took time to take the clothes off him and give it to this old man because the guards 
They wanted to prosper for the king even after they killed this preacher of the gospel. So the guards beat them and they, they let the people start stoning the preacher. And this old man standing back there holding the clothes, he's laughing, he's mocking the preacher that's being stoned just along with the other ones until he heard the last words of that preacher. That preacher said, Father, charge them not this sin. That preacher said, Father, I know what they're doing to me, but don't hold them responsible for what they're doing to me. Charge them not. They're only, they're only killing the tool, the vessel that carries the righteous word. And that old man holding them clothes named Saul, only through forgiveness can a Saul, the most devastating Christian slayer in the world, be turned into a Paul. The greatest preacher, the greatest missionary that was known throughout the Bible. Only through forgiveness can the healing begin? Praise God. If anyone, if anybody, in my opinion, in my humanistic view, as imperfect as it is, had a right to hold a grudge, to hold on to unforgiveness, it was Joseph. He was thrown into a well. He was sold into slavery, thrown in prison, forgotten about, lied about. But through Joseph's forgiveness of his brothers, he saved a people. He saved a generation. Through Joseph's forgiveness, we have the righteousness of God. The forgiveness of God. Only God can show us that forgiveness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, and I, I could stay long on closing right here. And, but I'm, I'm just trying to show us. And Lord, the Lord wants us to know through forgiveness, the healing can begin. That's right. Come on. And whatever your situation, I don't know what you're going through, but whatever is your situation, so whether someone's offended you, they slandered your name, someone's someone's offended you by their actions, or if you just need to simply forgive yourself of something. When there's forgiveness, there's a healing, a release from your soul. When you forgive somebody, you begin the healing process for them and for you. And you bless yourself. Romans 4, Psalm 32. Blessed is he whose transgressions are forgiven. Hallelujah. And whose sins are covered. We have the second part of that scripture. It's in concrete. It's, it's done. It's finished. We have it. Our sins are covered by the Master. But we have the action. We have to implement. We have to be a forgiving person yes. to be, be a forgiven person. Oh, Praise God. Hallelujah. God bless each and every one of you. And I ask you just 
before we leave from here, I ask you just to take a moment and, and find a space and, and talk to the Master. Talk to the one that can revive that forgiveness in you. Because Jesus, it's, it, is, it is in us. It's in us already. He made us perfect in the womb. But we are born into this lustful, sinful world. So we have to come to Him and ask Him. Ask Him to revive. Revive that forgiving spirit within us. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you.